All right, so first I'm going to walk through Zigbee enrollment so that we can together experience what that's like. And I have a video that we're going to watch as I do that. So this shows the home menu first, and from that main menu, you can tap on devices. So this is going to display the devices that are already enrolled in the room controller to add new devices. There's a plus symbol at the top right that you can click on. Clicking on this is going to have the app begin scanning for and display first on the first tab that it defaults to is um, any intellect enabled fixture in range that has the new Bluetooth modules. But at the bottom, for this example, we're going to click the checkbox that says enroll Zigbee devices and then continue. So what the app is now doing is telling the room controller to open its Zigbee network and allow any devices that are in range and in pairing mode to be able to join the network. Right, so this is about this is the perfect time that if you haven't already put the devices into enrollment mode, or if you remember that one wasn't, or by default most are, now's a good time to make sure they are. Um, because this process lasts anywhere from 40 to 60 seconds as the network searches and searches and searches and devices that are in pairing mode will just automatically jump into any network as soon as they see it. So for this example, it found three devices. You can select all by using the check mark or select devices individually. If at this point you say I only want one of the three or what have you, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and bring all three in. So I did that by selecting all and then hitting save. And then after that, it's gonna bring me back to the enrollment screen, which is the scan list. So it gives me uh, the results of my Zigbee enrollment. So here I can continue to enroll devices if I want, or I can close the session by hitting finish, at which point the app will read through device information again. Hand that off over to the room controller. And then you'll be brought back to the list of devices. If you want to delete devices from the room controller, you just swipe left. And what I'm doing here is removing the three devices that I just enrolled to this room controller. So that's how the app and enrollment looks with the current process with Zigbee, how we've, I mean, we've been doing an elect enrollment um, since the beginning, since it's launched. Bluetooth is now a new option for intellect fixtures that have these new control devices integrated um, because it leverages the Bluetooth radio. Using that connection, the GreenMax DRC app can now gather the device's Zigbee credentials. It's interesting. So it's a Bluetooth connection, but it's actually pulling the, the device's Zigbee ID and its Zigbee properties and then passing that information on to the room controller. So it's really just facilitating Zigbee enrollment over Bluetooth connection. From the devices list, you tap on the plus icon in the top right-hand corner, and the app will begin scanning for and display any intellect fixtures in range that have the new Bluetooth-enabled sensor controller. Tap on the magnifying glass to connect to the device, and the fixture will begin to visibly actually flash on and off. If that fixture is going to be part of the room that you're programming, you can tap on the green check mark. If not, you can tap on the red icon and it'll put into a, a different list of devices you don't want for this session. Then you repeat that process with each device in the list or until you've enrolled all the fixtures in the room. Name the device in a way that makes sense, um, whether it be by fixture number or layout. Um, I typically, when I can type it right, use the fixtures BLE ID as part of the naming convention. Next, the user is presented with a new option of putting a device. Sorry, I was pacing as I recorded this and I 
wandered too far away from the room controller. Now that I'm reconnected, you can now put the device into a group or daylight zone during the enrollment process. Um, so for this example, I'm creating a group because I didn't have any in there. Naming the group, saving it, and then tapping the check mark next to it and saying, okay, device, I want you to be part of that group. And then doing the same with daylighting zones. I don't have any daylighting zones currently, but I'm gonna create one and then save it and tell the device to be part of that daylight zone. So this is happening during the enrollment process. So it's not yet part of the network, but as soon as it comes in, it knows right where to go. When I'm done with that, tap on finish to close the enrollment session. The app reads the different device nodes properties and then brings you back to the devices list. So different flow, different feel, different way using Bluetooth to um, enroll an intellect enabled fixture to a GreenMax DRC room controller. Another brand new feature is the ability to use your smart device's camera to read a QR code, to read the label on the side of the device, to pull the device's Zigbee information that way, and then pass it on to the room controller. So again, we'll start at the devices list and tap on the plus icon in the top right corner. By default, it brings us to a list of Bluetooth devices, and then there's three tabs across the top. And we're gonna go to the one on the far right that has a frame icon, and then tap again on that same symbol, and the app will open up the camera on your phone. It may ask for permission. And with the camera, you can scan the code on the side of the device, and just like that, you're now onto the same enrollment flow as uh, Bluetooth by naming the device. This is one of our switching power packs. I'm gonna name it LU20S. Save, and again, being able to add a device to a group or a daylight zone. This time my group is still there, so I'm gonna go ahead and select it. Don't need to create it again. and then hit finish when I'm done. You can clear the list of devices if you want by saying, I don't want that device for this session. I'm not gonna scan anymore. And then just hit finish when I'm done. So very similar process once you've brought the device's information in. Uh, it's just how you access it, whether it be Bluetooth, Zigbee, um, or using your camera. Once you're on the devices list, if you ever wanna rename a device, um, which happens frequently um, in my experience, uh, you can come here, rename it. You can also see device properties, firmware levels, and any individual device settings that you can adjust. So third enrollment method now that's available is scanning the QR codes. So really, really is gonna save a lot of time, especially as there's more coordination between uh, all parties involved to get those QR codes onto the plans or onto a list of devices or a list of rooms or what have you. Really, really gonna speed up programming time um, for everyone get the job done faster. The Bluetooth utility is another new feature. It's another new tool uh, that we have to be able to access the devices directly. So now this is not part of enrollment. This is a utility that we've developed for the purpose of resetting a device or updating its firmware. Um, really because we wanted to improve over the current process that required a tool, a hardware tool, um, programming the system, you need the app anyway, so we built in a new utility 
that can connect directly to the device Bluetooth point to point and access certain information and reset it that way. So to open the utility, this is from the main menu now, and you're going to click on the hamburger menu at the top left, not the back button, but the hamburger menu. And then there is Bluetooth utility. Click on that, and then the screen will display immediately a list of devices that are in range, their type, their BLE ID, and then their enrollment status. There's a green magnifying glass icon you can click on, which will identify the device or cause it to flash. And then the arrow on the right, if you tap on that, you can connect over Bluetooth to that device. Its LED will actually flash blue at you. Once connected, the screen will display the device details and whether or not a firmware update is available. And at the bottom, you can see factory reset is how you can reset that device to factory defaults. Use the arrow at the top to navigate back to the main menu. So really just, three main functions of the Bluetooth utility. Um, one, it's a quick scan of devices in the area, um, provides the BLE ID right there on the list, um, whether it is a sensor or a controller, and um, what's what its enrollment status is. So it gives our technicians a quick scan of all the devices in their state right away. Um, you can also identify devices to be able to quickly see which fixtures are physically where. Um, and then you can also connect to each device to be able to reset it if necessary without having to get up on a ladder or move a tile or what have you, um, or find a paperclip. <laughs> also uh, update the device's firmware, which doesn't happen that often. Uh, but should a new feature or critical system update be necessary, it's an option um, to update the device's firmware. There are other options through the room controller, but this is one way to do it using Bluetooth. So the Bluetooth utility is another great tool that is focused on improving the user experience and speeding up the process, right? You can now reset without having to You can get up a ladder or use a tool. Um, you can also identify fixtures quickly within the space, know their status, um, and sort of kind of plan out how you're going to do your programming. Um, of course, users have access to this utility as well, so they can, um, well, with the right permissions, be able to see um, the status of their space. So a summary of the performance improvements that we've made, QR code enrollment, and Bluetooth connectivity by our estimates, by our experience as far as how that compares to the current system and how long it takes to program those in elect fixtures versus these new in elect fixtures, it's about 60% faster, 60% because there's more options for enrollment. There's fewer steps during enrollment as well.